properly. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, sorry about that. Um, thanks so much for uh, the opportunity to speak. Um, I feel like I kind of live in an adjacent world that's complementary, and I'm mostly here to learn. Uh, certainly around the decentralized web. I think during intros, I kind of said uh, I live in the massively distributed web, uh, and I'll hopefully walk you through that. And would love to um, again hear about kind of complementary strategies that may that either we can contribute to or that may contribute to what we're doing. Um, I'm here to talk. My name's Chris Tucker. I'm here to talk about uh, a uh, standard that's getting ready to get voted out in the next uh, month or two through the Open Geospatial Consortium called the OGC API Connected System Standard, um, a open source uh, implementation of that called Open Sensor Hub, and uh, what I cheekily am calling uh, the Decentralized Web of Systems. Um, and I'll kind of walk you through that. So uh, this is an old slide. If it looks like an old slide, it's because it's an old slide. Uh, the OGC um, uh, sensor web enablement architecture has been around not quite 20 years, uh, but it's actually uh, the guy who started it, who I met 24 years and two months ago, um, right? It's been in the works for basically a quarter of a century. Um, and this is an old slide because, you know, back in 2004 or whatever, it was trying to communicate all the different kinds of things that are sensing systems that should be connectable uh, via the OGC um, uh, central web enablement architecture. And the language we used to use is space-based airborne, mobile, in situ, and terrestrial remote sensors of all phenomenologies. And the reason we did that was because the vantage point of the sensing matters geographically, right? If it's in space, it's on some orbital plane, a um, bunch of astrophysics governs all that, and uh, the, the look angle and the frustum and the phenomenology matter. Um, if you're in the air on an airplane, a whole bunch of other things matter that don't matter in space. If you're mobile on the ground, your vantage point's completely different. How you think about geography, how you think about pose is completely different. If you're an in situ sensor in the water, in the air, or whatever, you think about it different. And terrestrial remote sensors, think about a simple pan tilt zoom camera on the side of a building, right? You think about that differently also. But how do I do that in one common model? Um, that was first kind of the code on that was cracked for the thing called sensor ML, sensor model language, uh, which my friend Mike Botts start, um, created when he was at the University of Alabama Huntsville uh, working under NASA work. Uh, and that was really to solve the space to space to space interoperability that NASA had with too many sensors and not too many, a lot of sensors up in the sky. And how do I do that? But then the community said, wait a minute, if you can do it in space, can I do it in, can I do it in C2? Can I do it? And the answer was, sure, sure, sure. Um, so uh, that was a long time ago, and everything needs to be updated, modernized uh, from time to time. And over the past few years, the Open Geospatial Consortium, I think we've heard several references uh, to like the old web map server interface and the old web feature server and web covered server and catalog. Um, those were early web services. I mean, I've been literally at this for 25 years with the OGC now, so I've kind of watched it before people would really use the term web services. Um, and before REST was a thing, et cetera. Um, and uh, yeah, the OGC accomplished a lot with that architecture, but when uh, IT's consensus is that you need to be open API, REST, JSON, right? How do you migrate a, a, a kind of a complex, uh, very capable um, set of standards in that direction? That's what's been going on about the past four or five years with the OGC. And uh, we started that process after OGC API features came through, if you're an OGC nerd, you'll kind of remember the time frame of that. They 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 broke a lot of glass. They did a lot of things where we said, "Oh, that that's that's how you do this," and we followed suit um, and used OGC connected systems. You can check it out on GitHub um, to talk about it. Like you know, first of all, we changed the name. Um, we really it used to be an OGC that were maps, features, coverages, kind of like data, right? Data on a hard drive, data in a GIS, data in the cloud. It was data. But then we had these other guys that were kind of the red-headed stepchildren of OGC, and they were the sensor nerds. And the architectures actually, in many ways, were incompatible. Um, uh, not because anybody disagreed with each other. It's just that starting from the sensor itself, and interacting with the sensor itself kind of had different demands than dealing with geospatial data, maybe a spatial database, et cetera. And people hadn't really thought about what that bridge would look like between the two. So they kind of evolved separately. So um, 
that's one of the issues here. But also, it was all about geospatial sensors. And if you remember 25 years ago, if you had a sensor, you probably had money because they were expensive. You were probably a government agency or a big corporation. There was no Amazon where I could buy a $122 sensor that is super capable and just plug it in. And so we've kind of evolved through that, where now we're talking about connecting all systems on or around Earth. And you'll hear uh, when I talk about systems what I mean. And it's really not about sensors. It's about dynamic data coming in from all manner of sensors and having dynamic interactions with um, these systems. Um, again, uh, all domains, space, air, land, sea, cyber, electromagnetic. That probably shows that I'm a bit of a DOD bubba. I've spent a lot of the past quarter century there. They talk about domains all domain warfare, um, working in space, air, land, sea, cyber, and electromagnetic are the, the different domains that this whole set of standards works with. Um, I already talked about kind of fixed in C2, mobile in C2, fixed remote, mobile remote, right? You gotta be able to support all those things. All phenomenologies, we could talk about phenomenologies all day long if you want to. And then I just kind of, I throw a grab bag because a lot of these communities are just different communities, right? The people go, I'm a sensor nerd. Ah, I probably know who that person is. I probably know what kind of degree they got. I probably know what part of the industry or how they came up as an academic. Um, then I hear the Internet of Things guy. Well, oftentimes they're in a very different conversation. They've grown up in a different way of a different set of assumptions. Then there's the robotics people. Same thing, right? They don't really talk to the Internet of Things people historically. Different set of standards. Drones, satellites, control systems, all sorts of crazy devices. These have been balkanized communities. Um, and the thing I like to point out is each one of those things in reality, if you Google them and ask what the, what are these things, it kind of says in small words, it goes, oh, this is just a collection of sensors, processes, and actuators, right? A sensor is actually made of the thing that observes the process that does something with it and kind of the actuator, even if it's just an F-stop on a camera, right? A robot is sensors, processes, and actuators. A satellite is sensors, processes, and actuators. So we've kind of abstracted that in connected systems. Um, it's really started with the same scope as ODC Sense Web Enablement, so a lot of core information models are there. Sensor ML, uh, observations and measurements, which is now observation measurements and samples, I believe is OMS. Um, and uh, uh, where we modernize it with OpenAPI, REST, JSON, um, uh, and tried to build this bridge with the static features. Um, uh, so we're actually built on top of the OGC API features. We can talk about how to do it. There's a part one and a part two. Um, uh, and we do a lot of, when we're that semantic conversation, we're caught up in uh, also the simultaneous modernization of the W3C OGC SOSA SSN um, ontology. It's the, the sensor uh, network ontology. Um, and trying to bring, it's interesting because while SOSA SSN, OMS, and SensorML are kind of describing the same things. They're doing it from different vantage points. So aligning them has been uh, excruciatingly difficult. Um, and not, not really hard work. It's just, well, I guess it is hard work to sit on lots of phone calls with people from different perspectives and hammering out a consensus. So that's been going on as part of this. Um, I just kind of put this, right? It's a RESTful interface, therefore there's resources. But I just want to call out, uh, I guess it's a few things. Um, you know, how do we describe a system? right? All these things are systems, whether it's a drone or a satellite or a control system. To us, it's just a system. It's a connected system. Um, deployments matter because where the system is deployed in space and time with precision and accuracy actually really, really, really matters. And uh, we didn't really deal with deployments. So it was kind of, I think the world of drones and autonomous systems has forced this change where we used to deal with it in a kludgy way in a different part of the schema. And now we know we're taking this drone for this scientific measurement here during this period of time as it relates to this article or this funded project. And we're packaging it up, putting it in the truck, and we're going over here. We're deploying it here for a different purpose, calibrated in a different way, et cetera. And so being able to search and understand your sensors as they have moved through space and time for different purposes really, really matters, thus deployments. Um, the spec sheets, what I, the whole reason why it's called procedures you know, the, the the community has kind of come around to a term, but in the end, we just like to point out, there's a spec sheet for every one of these sensors that we buy, right? You need to understand it. That's separate from the calibration information, which is separate from the deployment information. And all that's kind of got to be captured if you're going to be able to do this with uh, kind of provenance and repeatability. And then I'll uh, just point out the observations and commands. Like in the end, you're getting 
observations off of these sensors wherever they are, um, uh, and you're sending commands to them. And that can be everything from literally tasking a satellite in real time to asking a pan tilt zoom camera to slew to a particular XYZ coordinate um, to, uh, you know, unlock a door or make a Boston robed up robotic spot dance. You know, all those things are just sending commands to an object that exists in space and time. And you want it to perform a behavior, a take an action in space and time. So we use this thing called Open Sensor Hub. This is a lot of words. Um, You've heard me kind of say all of them in business. I live in the business world, so you got to have your super tight elevator speech. Otherwise, like you don't make revenue. So that's our super tight revenue speech, but it's way too many words. In the end, we just connect a lot of different data streams and sensing systems. That doesn't mean sensors. It means systems that sense. All systems sense, but I'll just call them sensing systems. Um, and integrating all sorts of processing engines to reveal new insights and make them all accessible through ODC APIs into all sorts of different visualization toolkits, but also all sorts of different processing uh, chains. Um, you'll see that we, uh, the, the way OpenSensor works, is I think this is kind of, we just write a bunch of stuff's already done by OpenSensor, so then we just write a modicum, a modest amount of code to any additional system. We're not asking them to adhere to the standard, we write to their proprietary API. And uh, we're yet to kind of discover anything that is outside of the connected system superset. Um, we persist the data, so we're really interested in kind of this whole file point, like, versus where? Like, we're doing a Raspberry Pi over there, but then we're doing some cloud or edge device over there, and then we're pushing some to the cloud. We're doing storage and forwarding, depending on network availability. And, you know, we're living with the dynamic reality of moving across the planet and trying to sense a dynamic set of things. Uh, we have processing engines that we can plug in, or frankly, we integrate with third-party processing and we make everything available to any uh, client application or machine process that wants to consume off these OGC standards. Um, blah, 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 blah. I think I've said it all. Uh, we built it intentionally. We built OpenSensor intentionally as a node-based system, right? Because it's not like, it, it, it's weird. Like, I'll see a lot of these NSF-funded kind of geoscience things, and it's all about, like, some database where everything got aggregated. And it's unclear exactly how it all got aggregated, but I'm supposed to just trust that system because some professor, I'll pick on Arizona State, it's my old boss, president there, so I can just say it. You know, there's some guy there who got funded and he's like, trust me, this day is great. And you go, well, can you explain to me all the calibration of each one of those 1,000 installations and what the change was over time? They're like, trust me, it's great. It's at the gateway. Um, and that's cool. Like we're pro gateway if that's where the data needs to pool, but we also want to be able to know at the edge node, if possible, um, uh, you know, what is the data sheet? What are the calibrations? What was the deployment? And that needs to be, um, stored out in what we call sensor model language, um, for the purpose of re reproducibility and provenance, right? Every observation needs to be tied back to the actual system, the self-describing system and the rest of the architecture dynamically configures around that. I just do these, like, I, I have pages and pages of these, but it's just like, you name the sensing kind of system, we've written a driver for it. And uh, the problem is, is there's about a thousand new systems or sensing systems or sensors coming out on the market every day. So we try to maintain a representative sense of, um, set of drivers, but like tomorrow, there will be 1,000 more sensors just available on like Alibaba or TV. It's crazy. Um, so we would go broke trying to write a driver for every single one of these. But each one of those things increasingly have processing at the edge, storage at the edge. And how do we, we rope all these things in the same space? And I'm actually going to kind of stop here. I could talk for hours, but frankly, I'd rather have a conversation. Then we get guys calling us up like, oh, man, we want to deploy, you know, sensors, things through Helium. I'm like, what's Helium, right? And so there's a whole, again, there's these balkanized communities. If you don't know what Helium is, it's basically a community, let's call it an IoT-centric community, where I can uh, encourage people to deploy sensors around the world, and they're kind of going to get remunerated through crypto, right? Um, and But there's also a whole kind of blockchain trusty thing around it, which is great. For us, we just write a driver against any system. And I can tell you for a fact, um, there will never be one monolithic architecture that solves all the problems on the planet, thus interoperability, thus standards. Um, but 
there are super valuable kind of subcultures out there. And helium, if you look at how how many cool sensors are out there, that's great. Um, and it's kind of one instance, and I'm sure there will be others, where uh, it's kind of this decentralized thing that's tied to kind of crypto that's got a community where there's already a mechanism for payment, thus incentives to do things. And I'm just waiting for the next one and the next one, the next one, because the only constant in this world is change. Um, so anyways, uh, when we talk about a decentralized web, again, we're, we don't adhere in our architecture to kind of the principles. I thought I, mean, I learned a lot this morning to the principles of what is specifically called the decentralized web. But, you know, to most people who live in that cloud centric AI processing kind of world, they look at us like we're freaks because our stuff is all over and we're, you know, sitting in a forest somewhere, you know, getting an observation and moving another sensor five states away. And, you know, it's so massively distributed that most people can't wrap their head around it, but it's just distributed, it's not decentralized. Um, and we know these kind of decentralized communities are gonna own large chunks of connected systems that are randomly distributed around the world because it's kind of an opt-in community. Um, so if we write a driver to that, like, how do we make sure that we honor whatever kind of decentralized web system and incentives and, and processes and mechanisms that they're deploying within our drivers without us having to, you know, force the rest of the world to live under one monolithic model, which again, in my experience in a quarter of a century, that has never happened. And my prognostication is it never will happen. Um, but so, in, you know, if I have all these decentralized webs, how do I make them all work together in some interesting way? So that's it for me. Um, you know, half an hour may be too long. I might have just done that in five minutes or I don't know how long that took. Um, but yeah, so thanks. But I, I honestly, I'd love to learn. We deploy. That's what we do, right? We integrate with actual sensors, systems of all kinds, and we deploy in crazy weird environments to mostly solve like 99.999% uptime things. Um, and so like, how do we do that? How do we take advantage of all this new technology? Because this predates all this decentralized web stuff um, and we're curious about it, but we're we're not of that ilk. We don't fully understand. It, so that's it for me. Thanks so much. Any questions?